big statement by Joe Biden, unintentional maybe. It was certainly not scripted. Let me play it for you again. Then we're going to be asking Rick Grinnell for his comments on this. Let's go ahead. Here's Joe Biden. For God's sake, this man cannot remain power. All right, well, Rick, words have consequences. Elections have consequences. Words have consequences. Even if you agreed with this guy not wanting to be in, not having this guy still in power, was that the place and was that the way to handle this? Look, right now we have a crisis in Ukraine and our focus should be on helping Ukraine. What Joe Biden just did was make the goal defeating Russia. And that's a problem when it comes to, I, I would say, the incredible task of achieving that goal, as well as the fact that they are a nuclear power and have a permanent seat at the UN. And so uh, I think that the analysis from people to say, look, if, if um, somehow showing the Russians and teaching them a lesson and showing them that they, they can't bully and uh, somehow we, we push them back um, is a tangential benefit. Great, uh, because this bullying, um, you know, cannot continue to happen. We certainly have seen them uh, grab land and redesign the, the European borders under Obama and now under Biden. But I think the strategic mistake here, and let's be honest, the White House also thought it was a strategic mistake because they immediately jumped to try to correct it, is trying to say that there, our goal is somehow defeating Russia. You know, this comes on the heel of another misstatement, Rick, and that is about chemical weapons use. So let's play that one. Let's play bite number uh I don't have the bite number, but let's go ahead. It's the reporter asking Joe Biden about chemical weapons. To clarify on chemical weapons, could if chemical weapons were used in Ukraine, would that trigger a military response from NATO? It would, re it would trigger a response in kind, whether or not you're asking whether NATO would cross, we'd make that decision at the time. All right, so again, when, when you think of in diplomatic terms, Rick, and you were a diplomat for many, many years, when you say a response in kind, it immediately triggers, well, if they're going to use chemical weapons, we're going to do the same. Now, I, he says that what, they corrected that one, just like they corrected, well, he didn't mean troops in Ukraine, even though he said when you get to Ukraine. So you ask yourself, this is showing a weakness in American leadership here. If you would have rewinded us back to the summer of 2020, there were all sorts of warning signs that, uh, that said that Joe Biden is somebody who is constantly inarticulate, makes mistakes and gaffes. And the media just chalked that up to old Uncle Joe. And we know that he, he says things that he shouldn't. But as president of the United States, um, all of his musings, all of his gaffes, if you will, all of his problems show weakness for the United States. Uh, they're strategically uh, terrible for us. And so I think that as the spokesperson for the United States government, the senior spokesperson that Joe Biden is, as president of the United States, the leader of the free world, I think that he is really doing Americans a disservice when he is so prone to gaff after gaff. It makes us less safe and less secure. Let me ask you this. Bob Gates famously said Joe Biden's been wrong on every major foreign policy decision for 40 years. Now he's the president of the United States. So he's not the vice president anymore. He's not just the senator of the Foreign Relations Committee head. He is the president of the United States. This is, you know, the mixed messaging here and the correcting is a daily thing. And we've got a real crisis in Ukraine, which is affecting all of Europe. And as you just said, when you got the head of state, the main communicator, if you will, of the our government, this is create our allies are nervous. Yeah, they're very nervous. And actually, some in Germany have started correcting this and saying that this is not making Europe safe when uh, Joe Biden is talking about going after Putin and with regime change. Again, uh, we need to emphasize that Russia is obviously uh, the bad actor. Putin is, is the bad actor here. And morally, we can look at the situation and be cheering for Ukraine, of course. But um, we have to think about what's best for the United States in these situations and somehow articulating that Russia's defeat is our goal. Our goal is to help Ukraine. Our goal is to stop this war, to stop the violence 
and we should be doing it peacefully and diplomatically, and yet that's not what's happening. I have to finish with this, Jay, and just say I'm struck with you know, the, the admonishment that we always hear is be careful when you hire a senator to be president of the United States because they've never really been a chief executive officer. Right. They don't know how to implement. They know how to go up and vote. And 40 years of Joe Biden voting thinks that that's how you actually get things done is just with a one action, one and done type action. I want to uh, take one phone call here. Let's take Tara calling from California on line one. Uh, you're on the air joining with Rick Rennell. Go ahead, Tara. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Mr. Grinnell. Uh, my comment is this. Uh, Jesus tells us to love our enemies and to pray for those who despitefully use us. Now, there's been a lot of talk about whether Vladimir Putin is senile. Well, he's about seven and a half months older than I am. I don't, I don't know that he's senile, so he may mean exactly what he says. And President uh, Biden's comment about this man cannot be allowed to go on, yep. that's not for a speech. That's a comment for his prayer closet. Well, I mean, you're, you're right in this context. It, that statement of President Biden's, you know, shook the halls of European parliaments uh, rather dramatically in a very short period of time. But you raised a very interesting point. I don't think, Rick, Vladimir Putin is insane. I mean, I think he's dangerous, diabolical, but he wants this is what he wants. He knew his problem is he didn't get what he wants when he got inside of Ukraine. Yeah, something happened. I think he recently flipped. I don't know what yeah, it is. Something. He's seen death, close to death or seen death or or something, but he's reckless and uh, a madman like a, like a dog. I want to... They'll point out one thing that I think Tara said, which is really good. And she really separated uh, what Tara was saying is, is there's a difference between our individual behavior and when we are the leader of governments. And I actually believe that. I say at the UN all the time is that people are equal, countries are not equal. And we have to distinguish between what we do personally, what the Bible teaches us to do, our values personally, one to one, is much different than what how countries act. Countries actually go to war sometimes to protect their people. Countries do things that uh, are, are different than what individuals do. Individuals can be nice and forgiving and full of grace, but I don't think that countries are gonna act th that same way they have responsibilities. And so what Joe Biden did, I think, should have been kept to himself, could have been his personal opinion, could have been in his prayer closet, as Tara says, but acting as the president of the United States, it's reckless, dangerous. Europeans think that they're, they're less safe and Americans are less safe. So we've got also coming up, uh, and Anthony Blinken is going to be attending this uh, historic Israeli-Arab summit uh, amid the Iran deal tensions that are going on right now. Uh, talk about that for a moment, Rick, because that whole event, that kind of summit between the Arab countries, Arab states, and Israel would not have happened, I, I think, without your administration and the tremendous progress we made there. What, what do you expect from this? Well, we certainly won't hear, thank you, Donald Trump. Thank you, Jared Kushner. Thank you, Mike Pompeo. Thank you, David Friedman, Avi Berkowitz. We're not gonna hear any of that, but they should be uh, thanking the Americans that worked hard on it. I think that we also, it's for me, it's a lesson on the intelligence. Remember the intelligence community told us we'd see World War III if we moved our embassy to Jerusalem. Didn't happen, not true. I think the intelligence community missed what's happening in in Russia uh, in Ukraine with Russia. Um, the Ukrainians were much more uh, ready to fight than what our intelligence community yep. told us. They said that Russia would just roll right over. We've got a problem with the intelligence community. But in terms of what's happening in Israel right now, let's celebrate it. It's fantastic. Anthony Blinken gets a, a small victory here. Uh, he gets to cut the ribbon on all the heavy work that the Trump administration did. But it's a it's a good moment for the United States that this is happening, and it's certainly a great moment for Israel and its partners now in the region, Arab country partners in the region. Who would have ever thought? Rick Rennell, thank you for so much for your insight and for your being part of the team here at the ACLJ.